All right, guys, welcome back from the break. You're still watching This Morning right here on Metro Television. My name is Desmond Okrekud, as you can call me, Desifadin, the star boy, and I'm here with Nanaya Tonobati. We're going to talk now, and we're talking speech and language disorder in children. A very, very interesting one, and I really, um, you know, I'm hoping to really learn from this particular topic, and our resource person this morning is Victoria Ama Ashite, and she is a speech and language therapist, and she will take us through all of that. Good morning and welcome, Victoria. <laughs> good morning. Hope you're good. Okay, so I'm doing well. Fantastic. So um, this this is a topic that I think lots of people do not really you know know about, and it's really important that we talk about it. If we say speech disorder or language disorder in children, what exactly is that? Okay, so. Um, speech and language disorder. So we can break it into speech disorders okay. and then language disorders. So when we say speech disorders, a difficulty that children have using the sounds to communicate what they want to communicate. So for example, um, a child says, for example, fish instead of fish, or a child says up instead of cup. They are not able to pronounce or they are not able to produce the sounds that they need okay. to communicate. So that's a speech disorder. When we come to language disorder, it's the difficulties that they have when they, when they, when they need to express themselves or they want to say something. Okay. They are not able to express themselves. They are not able to use facial expressions. They are not able to use gestures and also understanding. So you give them instructions, they are not able to follow. So basically, this is um, speech and language disorder. That's what it's about. Okay, you're breaking that down for us. Now, yeah. what causes all of these, um, you know, if we're talking about speech and language, so what causes that? Okay, so um, the causes are many. So um, basically, genetics. So okay. if you have someone in your family or you know someone in your family who didn't talk early or had a speech and language disorder, there's a likelihood that um, your child would have one. Um, secondly, hearing impairment. So if... Um, the child has a hearing impairment because children say what they hear okay so if they do not hear and they do not hear well they will not be able to produce it so hearing impairment usually people think is deaf but it's not about being deaf um they are when it comes to language the sounds we use to produce words okay there are some sounds that are very loud so take a sound like pop it's very loud you can okay. hear it take a sound like it's very subtle, so okay. you may not hear it. So a child who has some speech impairment, uh, sorry, some hearing impairment, they may hear the loud sounds, may not hear the soft sounds. So when they start talking, then they take these sounds out of their language or out of what they are saying. So okay. their speech will not be clear. Okay, so these are some of the things that would cause it. And also not, not interacting with your child. So you need to interact with your child. And as you interact, they are learning. Okay. So if they miss okay. all these interactions growing up, there's no interaction, they are not hearing language and things that can cause um, speech and language disorders. These are just some examples. Okay. I see. That's a lot. Um, what are the signs, some of the signs um, a parent can actually see that this is mm. happening to my child? Yeah. Okay. So, um, again, language develops in a sequence. So mm. there are milestones that a child is supposed to reach. And so for some examples, so if you have a child, maybe your child is one year going to one and a half, okay. and the child is not saying anything. There's a problem. There's a problem. Okay. okay, so at one year, we expect the child to be able to use single words, but the child is not saying anything at this stage. There's probably a problem there. And then, um, let's say you have a five-year-old, you can't hold a conversation with that child. So you start a conversation, the child can't follow through that conversation. Or maybe you start talking about one thing and the child will talk about something else. Yeah. It's an indication that the child has a speech and language disorder. Or maybe you can't send, or take a four-year-old and you, you tell the child that, okay, go to the room and bring my shoes under the bed. A four-year-old, I expect a four-year-old to be able to do this. To the do child that. can't do that. Then it means that there is a problem. So there are, there are so many ways, or there are, there are lots of things signs that, that yeah, there are lots of see. signs that yeah. you can see. But once you are concerned, if you are there and you feel like, um, I'm not too sure about my child, as my child has an issue, mm. if you are not sure about it, it's best to see a speech and language therapist. We'll do an assessment, we'll see whether the child's language is up to 
their age, up to their expected okay. age, and then we can start intervention if there is a problem. Okay, so what are some of the related problems associated with language disorder? Sorry? Some of the problems related or associated to language disorder. Okay, so um, then it's you basically communication. So their communication is affected. And so if the child has a language disorder, mm -hmm. the basic thing it affects is their communication. So for example, um, a child may not be able to tell when they need something. The mm -hmm. child can say that maybe I'm hungry, I want to wee wee, I want to, um, maybe I want to go out. The child can't communicate basic needs. These are some of the problems that yeah. comes with um, um, speech and language disorder. Or the child's um, social skills may be a bit off, may not okay. play with other people, mm -hmm. will not be sociable. Okay. Okay, so always wants to be on their own, may not talk, will not want to share their interest. And if it's not addressed and they grow up, you, you realize that they are, they are not able to, like, they, they'll just talk about their interest they're and they're not interested yeah. in anything that Apart you want yes. to talk about. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I want to know, as you interact with parents, do they understand this? You know, do they know this is mm -hmm. the situation? Uh, well, for a lot of parents, no, but as a, as, as a, as a professional, you need to make them understand. You need to educate them. So as part of our job, we do a lot of education just to let parents know what's happening and then let them know what they can do. Okay, and this education, does it happen before or after the child is born to the parents? You see, <laughs> sometimes they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So she's pregnant, and you are now coming to break down certain things because let's say if I am pregnant now, you're coming to tell me in the first, uh, after the baby's in the first month, two months, three months, you are educating me. So with what you are saying, do you do the education before or after the child is you You've asked a very important question, and it's something that um, as speech therapists we are, we are looking at. Because for now, if you are pregnant and you go to the hospital, there's nothing about speech and communication okay. so far. So um, we usually do education when you come to us. Oh. You have, your child has a problem, you come to us. That's when we start doing education. And so, that's also yeah. <laughs> so if you if you could advocate so that um, <laughs> if you could advocate mm -hmm. so that some of these things are thought earlier, okay. Okay. and it can help mm -hmm. prevent some of these um, mm -hmm. um, challenges that challenges. children have. Okay. So if a child has this disorder, how long does it take for the child to recover? Yeah, Especially to recover if the from child that. comes yeah. to a speech therapist, Great. how long does it? So take? it depends on the child. So we always say that it depends on number one, the child. Number two, the parents, and three, the specialist they are seeing or the therapist okay. they are seeing. Okay, so some child will recover faster with therapy. Some will take a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it depends, and also it depends on the case. So um, you look out, where, what is the child's level now? And then you build on it. Okay. So if the child's level is low, obviously it's going to take a long time. Sometimes it takes months or a year or two. But it depends. It depends on the condition. It depends on the child. Can, can it, it ever? On, sorry to cut in, but can it ever be sorted? Yeah, some can. Some can be resolved. Okay. Yeah, there are some that can be resolved. Because when you come to therapy, actually, it's it's not just about what I do. Because when you come to, to therapy, I'll see you for a maximum of maybe one hour, forty-five minutes, one hour. I'm done with session. If your child doesn't have very good attention, thirty minutes, I'm done. So the whole week. You are with a child in the house. So you would have to then continue what I do at home. Okay. If you do not continue, it's going to take a long time for your child to actually recover. Okay. This is a personal concern. <laughs> you see? <laughs> it's not personal. Yeah, okay. it's a personal concern. Most often, if you have different backgrounds at home, especially the tribe, Ewe, Ga, Ashanti, or whatever, when the child is growing up, different language. Does the child get confused in learning one or more language? Yeah. Okay, so that's a, that's a good question. And I think that for a lot of parents, it's an issue that they keep asking, will my child, child get confused if I introduce more than one language? Now, the answer is no. Mm. Your child will not get confused. Whether your child has a language difficulty or not, the child will, not get, will never get confused. Because okay. the thing is that if the child has a problem in one language, it would affect all the other languages. Mm -hmm. If we resolve it in one language, it's likely to resolve in all the other languages. Okay. So you don't need to limit um, the languages you speak to your child. Okay. Actually, 
children who speak more than one language, which research shows that they have more um, cognitive abilities than okay. those who speak just one language. Okay. So you are doing your child a favor by teaching your child more than one language. Okay. I get the bits about the parents that, you know, they can have the, the children can have the session with you, but also the parents need to do that at home, really. What should be some of the things that parents should be doing? Uh, watching television, listening to the radio, listening to some of these, you know, things so that it can help them. Okay, so at home, um, usually when you see a speech therapist and they do the assessment mm. and they know what your child's difficulty is, you are usually, most of the time, they'll give you recommendations okay. what to do at home. But generally, what I can say is that um, when you have a child, when you give birth to a baby, as young as the child, they start interacting with the child. When the child does cuckoo, you can do a cuckoo back to the child. <laughs> you don't just keep quiet. But even if the child does it, it, it may sound very silly, but even if the child doesn't understand, you need to respond to respond the child's to it, yeah. um, uh, sounds that they are making. You are encouraging the child to communicate. Okay. okay? So interact with the child. Don't leave the child with gadgets, TVs and stars because that's what a lot of parents do i do understand them because maybe they are busy and all mm -hmm. that but what these gadgets actually do is that they it, it gives to the child and doesn't give the child the opportunity to give back to okay. their so the phones the tablets the tvs they don't give the children the, opp the opportunity to um, respond yeah, to what is happening yeah. so it's yeah. a one-way kind of affair yeah. so at the end of the day the child will just come out maybe the child will hear mommy on phone because um a, a cartoon called the child mother mother and the yeah. child will come out and he's saying mommy mommy but it's not calling you okay interesting and it's a problem yeah. how how okay. easy is it to assess you know speech <laughs> therapists to, to to be able to go to them um well speech therapy it's, we, there, are, there are not a lot of therapists in the country, but there are some major places that you can get mm -hmm. speech therapy services. Okay. So, um, Kualibu mm -hmm. has service 37, um, Eastern Regional Hospital, if you're in Cape Coast, Cape Coast Hospital, who also has one, okay. and then um, Tamale Teaching Hospital. But of course, if you're in Tema, you can come to Koi Pediatrics or Hope Setters Autism Centre. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so for me, I haven't given birth yet. <laughs> that also, but this is good. It's good. We yeah. have to talk about the awareness, the before and after. Yeah. That side. Okay. It's very, very yeah. important, important. Because some, some parents really don't know what you are really, yeah. really talking yeah. about. And yeah. we really have to work on that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Victoria, for joining us. Thank this was so Victoria Amashite is a speech and language therapist and she mm. joined us this morning. So Nana, we'll wrap it up today yeah. on the show. It's been a great one. Thank you guys so much for joining us. My name is Desmond Okreku, as you can call me, Desiree and the Star Boy. And of course, my <laughs> beautiful lady here. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow, same time, 7 a.m. right here on Metro Television. The next is Good Morning Ghana with Dr. Randy Abbey. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. And on Entertainment Review, D-Black is on today later at 3 p.m. Bye-bye.